this week, I went out into the world for one of the first times since um, the world ended. And there was a protest going on. Do you guys hear about this protest at the weekend? Uh, the Westfield one. Well, this was an anti-mask protest in central London. Oh. Uh, yeah. Oh, I might have heard of a similar one. I went out in central London. I wanted to have a lovely day. And this anti-mask protest was, kind of, was you know, they were going along, leave our children alone. Vaccine isn't going to kids. You know, oh, no more lockdown. Restrictions are being eased. I don't want to wear a mask. Okay. That's fine. I, whatever. Um, so, so pointless protest for one thing, more or less. The things that they seem to be protesting, mostly already gone. Um, yeah. That's not really the point of my story. So I was talking to a friend afterwards and we kind of came, it kind of came up in conversation. Well, what, okay, what would happen if say in 10 years time, everyone that took the vaccine just dropped dead? Now, obviously there is no evidence to, there is no evidence to even suggest that might happen. Mm -hmm. In fact, if you look at what's going into the vaccine, there's not even, I, I don't want to say it can't happen because I'm going to cover my ass, but. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to bite you in 10 years. <laughs> oh, it's going to come back and bite me in 10 years. Well, it won't matter. He'll be dead. He's, well. From the microchips. True. Yeah, from all those microchips. No, look, there is no evidence to support that whatsoever. I can very con confidently say there is a, a basically 0% chance that everyone that's taken the vaccine will drop dead in 10 years, mm -hmm. essentially, right? Um, but. That's the thing. What what if the people that have been very hesitant towards the vaccine were right? And this is something that is that is kind of kind of happening now with the with the whole COVID thing. You might have seen. I've not actually looked into it um, very deeply, but apparently there is there is some evidence surfacing that uh, coronavirus um, came from a lab, a Wuhan lab leak. Again, I I've heard that as a conspiracy before. I've heard that for a while. Joe Biden has specifically told his intelligence agencies to look into, like, seriously look into that and determine whether it's true. Okay, so this is this is a thing where people have been saying it for ages. Oh, what about if it's this? What about if it's this? And it's kind of being taken even a little bit more seriously now, in that people are looking into it to make sure to determine that it is absolutely not true. And I want to talk about, let's say, for example, if the Wuhan lab leak, it was the case. I'm not saying it it remotely is, but let's say it was. Does that does that does that vilify uh, not vilify does that vindicate the people who were saying it from the start? I don't think so. And there's nice. a, there's a really simple reason for this. This is the difference between a conspiracy theory and like an actual scientific theory or a hypothesis or anything based on any evidence because these conspiracy theories are just that. They're conspiracy theories. You can't you can be right about something every now and then, right? If even if you are even if you're basing yeah. it on no evidence, even if you are just basing it purely on racism and you hate the Chinese, right? A broken you, clock is right twice a day. Yeah, exactly. A yeah. broken clock is right twice a day. So if you are wrong about, if you are, if you are like, if you are right about this, it's entirely for the wrong reasons and you, you're not really vindicated. It doesn't mm -hmm. prove anything other than you made a random guess based on prejudice and you turned out to be right for entirely the wrong reasons. The point I'm trying to make here, right, is that when it comes to people who believe in conspiracy theories, sometimes they might be right on something, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes sometimes there might be a kernel of truth in something that they're saying. But the fact is that ultimately, it's never ever based on evidence or research. And in that case, it kind of isn't, you kind of can't compare it to sort of the, the knowledge that we say we've got based on science. Because in science, you can be wrong. Mm -hmm. We can accept, you can accept that you're wrong, but the, the reason, the thing that you use to decide whether you are correct or incorrect about something is evidence. That is, that is the core thing, right? You can say, I believe this because evidence points to, like all evidence points to, points to this, or I don't believe that because we don't have any evidence to support it. That is perfectly fine. And if it turns out that all the evidence that we've got to support this, oh, uh, it was shakier than we initially thought. And actually we've changed our minds. That's perfectly fine. But if you're the kind of person that is like, but what if, right? What if this is the case? Ah, uh, there's no evidence to say it's not the case. So you can't say that it's not true, right? You can't say that it's not true, but there's also no evidence to support it. And it turns out that you were right when actual evidence comes up. Mm -hmm. You just made a random guess, okay? That you, it's not the same thing. And really this is, this is less of a story and just please, for the love of God, stop spreading conspiracy theories about the vaccine. Cause it's just, it's not helpful. It's not useful. And literally all of the evidence- yeah, right. Come on. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I only did it a couple What's times. Wrong with couple you? times. One or two times. This no. is an intervention. Corey actually told me this was going to happen before we started, and we're fed up of it. <laughs> sick of it. Sick of this behavior. So sick that we should I'm have sorry. got a vaccine for it a few weeks ago, but we didn't. I'm going to get my vaccine live on site, guys. <laughs> <laughs> to 
make up for it. All right, Boris Johnson. <laughs> Ask, asking Chris Whitty to inv- inject him live on TV. <laughs> <laughs> Coronavirus, by the way, not with the vaccine. Yeah, I mean, uh, look, Boris Johnson is the one who decided to go and shake hands with coronavirus patients because he wanted to show how... I'm proud to say I shook hands with every patient in the hospital. I, I, you know he Yay! was trying to be... You know he was trying to pull a Diana when Diana was like, you know, going to um, going to sort of um, hospitals with AIDS patients, right? Right, sure. But this is the equivalent of Diana being like, I had sex with every patient in that hospital <laughs> unprotected because I care about them. <laughs> like, that is exactly what this is like. It's exactly yes. what it was like. Or I drank all of their blood. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I did. I. 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 I did like five lines of their blood. I snorted it right up. I took samples of everyone. Needles with every person <laughs> oh, in that no. hospital. Wow. So people said, "No, no, no, don't do it." But I don't care about the stigma against HIV patients. <laughs> oh dear. Seriously oh, though, dear, um, Boris. <laughs> you, you, you got it wrong. <laughs> No, it is always, and we talk about this every now and then, it is always worth challenging your beliefs, right? Always worth challenging your beliefs and making sure that you're you're basing them on the best available the best available evidence. And changing your mind is perfectly okay, so long as you're doing it based on evidence. I guess the thing is about this, though, is that the, the people who are sort of ped, like peddling the conspiracy theory idea mm. are comparing themselves, not necessarily to scientists who are backing up them, their claims with evidence, but to the average person who believes what's on the news. Mm. That's who they and and so they the the average person doesn't actually have any evidence to believe to to back up the idea that COVID came from a a, a wet what is it a wet shop a wet, wet market wet market, yeah. wet market yeah. they their evidence is that they they believe the newspapers have the evidence before they print that. And obviously the newspapers do generally have pretty good evidence before they print stuff. Not when it comes to vaccines, but yeah. Well, here we go. Exactly. <laughs> so that's what I, I think you're comparing a conspiracy theorist with a scientist rather than a conspiracy theorist to what they would see as like the sheep. Oh that's God. who they're put. That's that's who they're, no, yeah. they're putting themselves against. I fair think. enough. That's fair the enough. This, the, yeah, <laughs> the number of times I've been called a sheep, by the way, right? People being like, you should cut oh, your hair then. You've, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Genuinely, people that have said to me, oh, you've never, you've never. I bet you don't even read the scientific papers. You get all of this, all of your information from CNN. Oh, that's some projection. You right sheep. Then. It's like, yeah, no, man. I, I, I do it no, every if week. If anyone does read the the, the, uh, the evidence, it is sorry. <laughs> Anybody I know. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is that obviously you need to, I'm not expecting everyone to read papers and, and do this and that. But when I say make sure that you're, um, make sure that it's based on the best available evidence, that's the best available evidence to you. So if you, you, you need to try and find sources that are uh, sort of reliable. Um, and essentially how you do that is, can they admit that they're wrong? Can mm. they get, like, if, will they print a retraction? Will they say, oh, here's a correction? If they do that, then it's probably a good source. They do hold they, themselves accountable. Yeah. yeah. Do they show where their sources come from? If they do that, then usually they'll be a good source. You got to make sure that the sources are actual good source and it's not coming from like vaccines are evil.com. You know, like that's if, if the source. That's a great source, Corey. <laughs> that's my homepage. I go there every day. <laughs> 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 this is an intervention for the two of you. This is what. <laughs> no, but look, honestly. We could talk, probably talk about this more at, at some later day about finding how to find reliable sources, but you, you can't always believe what you're what you're reading on the news. And don't because just because something seems scary and just because something seems like oh this is revol- like a sort of revolutionary idea, don't necessarily hop on it immediately because mm. there are people out there that are lying, even if they don't mean to be. You know, no. and a lot of them do mean to be. No way. But yeah, I mean, look, this is the thing. Just be careful about where you get your information from. Like Psy Guys. Always get your information from Psy Guys. Just listen to us. Just listen to us. That's it. And share us with your friends too. Tell them they can get their information from us. Yeah. Because Corey tells us off if we ever say anything wrong. So This is true. When you the know. cameras go off, we get <laughs> we get shouted at. Yeah. <clears throat> no, yeah. seriously though. Um when we make No, you don't get shouted at, don't say that. The shouting actually doesn't work, which is why he's running this story. Because he's publicly <laughs> shaming us instead. Because we've we got used to the shouting. No, if we ever make mistakes as well, you can always let us know and we'll we're always very happy to to bring that up. Because we do we like we make mistakes, we do that, but we want to try and be as correct as we can. I think that's it from my story. If you enjoyed that clip, head over to patreon.com forward slash sci guys where you can find the full show. Or you can stay here and catch up on old Sci Guys episodes. Or you can follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Sci Guys Pod to find out when we're doing more live shows. <laughs> <laughs>